to today's show. I've got a really special guest with you. This is my 11-year-old, and I she doesn't have school today. She has a little bit of a break, and these are the days I usually record uh, the show. And I asked her, what, what should I do a podcast on? And she actually came up with an idea for a podcast and a small outline. So I asked her if she wanted to be a part of the podcast and to share the podcast with you today. So what do you think? It's going to be okay. <laughs> Good. All right. So do you want to tell everybody what your podcast um, topic is today? Um, our podcast topic is three steps to not lose your cool when something bad happens. Yeah. So you were telling me about a time when you felt like something was stressful, you felt like something bad happened. Do you want to tell them a little bit about what happened? Um telling me about the laundry. Oh yeah, so there was this one time where I got a book from the library and I went over to visit my cousins and when I was over there I was doing my laundry um, and I accidentally put my book where my laundry was and when I put it in the washer I was like okay, I know how to do the washer. So then later when I'm um, taking it out to put it in, in the dryer I open it and I see tiny white scraps of paper in it and I'm like, um, hopefully I didn't just break their washer. I think this is going to be okay. So I walked upstairs and I said, I think I broke your washer. So, um, I went, well, they went downstairs with me and I was like, wait, is that a book cover? And I looked at it and it was an actual book cover from my book that I was reading. And then, um... Everything was okay in the end, and like, yeah. So I love that story that you just told, because sometimes bad things do kind of happen. Now, the situation in and of itself is neutral. The circumstances are neutral. There's lots of facts about what happened, but it felt bad when it happened. That's something yeah. that you remember that was pretty stressful, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... I had Aspen tell me some of the things that she did to help her get through that stressful time and hopefully help you if you're going through something that feels bad or feels stressful for you right now. So why don't you tell them the three tips and then we'll go through each one of them. Okay, so the three tips are like sort of basic and easy. So the first tip is noticing like fear and stress in your body when it happens and like how you react to it and thinking how you react. And then once you notice the fear and stress, then the second step is to keep a positive outlook and like make sure like you're calm sort of. And then the third part is um, to reach out for support. So you're with people that like you trust and like you like and stuff like that. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, so I've got a couple of questions for you about that. So noticing the fear and stress, like how does that show up for you in your body when that happens? Like, you know how like if someone was going to scare you and like it was a jump scare, it's like, wait a minute, I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that can kind of feel uncomfortable. And, like, you just want it to go away, right? Yeah. 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 That can be part of resisting it. But what you're saying is instead of resisting it, to mm -hmm. develop a positive mindset. So what are some things that you tell yourself or you help tell other people about keeping a positive mindset? Um, so I, like, tell myself everything's going to be okay. I'm not going to die today, hopefully. <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, and there was this one time yesterday, I had a band concert, and a bunch of the flutes were, like, uh, really worried about the concert because it was going on live. So I helped one of my friends by saying, if you can beat me in an arm wrestle, then everything's going to be okay. So I went, I went easy on her, and she won in the arm wrestle. <laughs> Very nice. So, and then... Tell us about that third part, and especially like when you were doing the laundry. 
that reaching out for support. So I think that's something that's hard for some people sometimes is to say, ooh, I think I need a little bit of help. I maybe can't do this on my own and I feel like I broke the washer. I feel like I broke something in my life. Things are not going okay. So tell us what you do to make it safe for you to feel like you can ask people for help. Um, so first, before like anything ever happens, I like want to make good friends that I'll be around and like people that I really, really trust. I mean, that's basically the meaning of being a Hufflepuff, <laughs> being around friends and having friends. That's right. That yeah, and it. like loyal and stuff. Yeah. That's so good, Aspen. I love those tips that you shared with us. And I had put together a little toolkit for Aspen. I think it was, how long ago was that? Maybe it was like, like three years. Three years ago. I just found it because we were going through some papers. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about um, maybe how kids can feel better when they are feeling like they it's a little scary to reach out for help? Because does that happen to you sometimes? Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Like, um, like I usually think like with my homework, I'm like, I have to do this on my own or else I won't learn. Mm -hmm. So then now like that was what I felt like two years ago. But now that I think about it, I'm like, wait, I need help with this problem. So I'm going to go get help. Yeah. So do you want to tell them a little bit about the toolkit that we developed? Okay. Yeah. So, um, I found... Well, we found our toolkit a while ago. It says Aspen's Toolkit. What to do when I don't want to talk. So we can turn it around. You can look at it. They, they see it. Okay. So you, you, can, you can go ahead and read it. Um, so I have 12 things. Yeah. And so we came up with this because what we were doing, and I, I was doing it unintentionally. Now I do it on purpose. What we were doing was creating safety for Aspen because part of the reason why it's hard to reach out for help is that you don't feel safe. Like maybe there was a time before that you reached out for help and you didn't get the help that you wanted in the way that you wanted to. And so that maybe felt dangerous to you. So we came up with a toolkit for her to start to feel safe in her body again when she was feeling like she wanted to, she was feeling some shame, didn't want to talk, didn't want to reach out. So She's going to read some of the things that help her to feel calm and safe. And maybe this will spark some ideas for you, too, when you're going through something challenging and it feels like everything is very dangerous. Um, maybe there's some ways that you can create safety because then once you create that safety, that's when you can start to reach out for help, accept it, and start to grow and learn. So you want to tell some of your ideas? You don't have to read all of them, but maybe, okay. maybe your top few. Um, so... The first thing is like having a snack because like um, the problem list. could actually be like hunger and you're like hungry but angry so you're hangry mm -hmm. um, and that could like help your problem be better and like have a clear mind for thinking. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is like taking a brain ba break or like um, like doing a meditation to call you calm you down um the third one is like getting all the energy out so then like you like like you have a bunch of energy you need and like you need to run around and play and get all the energy out so then you can have a clear mind and not have like a bunch of energy just trying to jump around inside you mm -hmm. and then um number four is like jumping on the trampoline and like it's good to practice jumping on the trampoline or playing outside because it's, like, good for your health and stuff. Um, and then checking the mail. You could get, like, new things from the mail. and like Because that's one of the things that you yeah. really liked to do, right? Yeah, I really like to check the mail to see if I got anything. Yeah. Um, and then, like, using line breaths, like, the same as, like, the brain break. Like, to calm yourself down. Can you show them what a lion breath looks like? <sighs> and then, um, like, calling a relative is really good. Like, if you don't want to talk to you, your parents, then you can talk to, like, a relative that, yeah, you can talk to a relative. And then, um, 
you can also like color because colors well coloring is really soothing and like yeah calm for the mind um you can wrap up in a blanket and like warm yourself and like like just be so warm and compact comfy and cozy yeah comfy and cozy and then you can also like hug a stuffed animal and like squish all of your like anger out into it or like pretend that it's someone that you really like and like hug it so hard um and then you can also get a drink of water because you might be really dehydrated and you can take a break in your room because sometimes you might just need alone space and um i even made this little thing from me to me little says, note to herself yeah, note to myself um it says mom's not trying to kill me mom's trying to help me learn because i was doing homeschool yep yep and it was hard it was hard to reach out and say i i don't understand something i'm trying to do this and i'm just so frustrated and it's really hard but you can learn that it is safe to reach out to those people when you are making sure that you're fostering relationships with people that you trust and that can help you to in turn keep developing that positive mindset so all right anything else you want to tell my listeners before we leave um stay positive <laughs> all right i hope that you enjoy this episode and that you too can use this three-step process that my daughter created on how to keep your cool when something goes bad, to notice the fear and stress that may be happening in your body, to keep a positive outlook, and to reach out for support. All right, have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.